Assalamu alaikum. Good evening to our guests. Um, I just want to make a couple of brief points. I just need you guys to stay with me for a little bit. Right? Number one is that freedom of speech is a virtue that many countries and many people don't have the luxury to exercise. Okay? Uh, I went to school in Saudi Arabia. I lived there for almost eight years of my life. So I've had some exposure to other countries and how they function, how they operate. And I can tell you that as Americans, we have some luxuries, freedom of speech being one of them, that people in other countries don't have, right? And I think that we take those freedoms and those luxuries for granted when we use freedom of speech to insult people's religion, insult people's faiths, people literally, they become attached to their faith to the point where they believe that the only salvation that they have in life is based upon the faith that they believe in. And to have someone come and insult that under the guise of freedom of speech, in my estimation, would be taking this luxury that we have and just abuse it because as people who can exercise freedom of speech there's so many things that we can speak out against <coughs> oppression you know marginalization of certain ethnicities and cultures and you know there's so many things that we can utilize freedom of speech for and no way am i justifying what happened to um, the journalists at charlie Hebrew. But the thing is, is that um, I'm pretty much a straight shooter, and I you know, don't really cut corners, and I think that there are people out there who like to hear it straight up without all of the political jargon, without all of the political correctness that everybody is kind of tiptoeing around, right? This is freedom of speech, right? I'm free to say, right? I'm exercising that right now, right? Okay, but uh, in quoting Pope Francis today, Right? And you guys had to know that this was coming. Right? And I mean, like, we, we respect the Pope and, you know, what he said was, was definitely on point. But I think the voices of the people who, you know, adhere to their respective religions, their voices should be enough. We shouldn't have to have Pope Francis, who's a Catholic, who comes and says that there should be limits to freedom of speech when it comes to insulting people's religion. Why did Pope Francis have to say that? Why, when a Muslim says that, why wasn't that enough? Why does Pope Francis have to say that before people, the light bulb goes off in people's heads and they say, oh wow, you know, that does make sense. Why do the people who, the voices of the people who adhere and believe in their respective faiths, why isn't that enough? And yes, a pe people do have the right to, to insult you. They can insult you. But as Pope Francis said, as he had one of his friends traveling with him, he said that if my friend said something about my mother, right, then he has to expect that I'm going to punch him in the face, right? And he threw a punch at the guy, and it was in a joking manner. He was being facetious. But there is a reality to that, and that is that when you insult people, you have to understand that there will be some backlash to that. And the, the thing that bothers me the most is that we, here in America, Islam has been here since the very beginning, even before, as some accounts may, you know, may boast. But the point that I'm making is that we live amongst Muslims. There are all of these Muslims. I, I mean, you go, I flew to um, Minnesota, right, which is probably where the largest population of Somalis are in America. And the whole airport is literally run by Somalis. So if Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are this or that, then how is it that a whole airport in America is being ran by Muslims? And we buy into that because it's easy to paint people with one brush to say, oh, they're all like that. And your next door neighbor is Muslim. Your colleague that you work with is Muslim. But we'll still say they're all like that. And it's, and it's, it's not fair. It's not fair. And I mean, in, you know, in Islam, we are literally obligated to protect houses of worship. There's a verse in the Quran that says that if Allah had not checked one people by way of another, then many mosques, 
synagogues and churches and places where God's name is revered would have been destroyed. This is a verse in the Quran where we are obligated to protect houses of worship even if people don't share the same faith that we have. And, you know, unfortunately, the religion of Islam is under constant scrutiny due to the actions of a loud minority. And make no mistake about it. These people are a minority. Out of the 1.8 billion Muslims, and they grow every day because someone is embracing Islam every single day. Right? Out of the 1.8 billion Muslims around the world, these people with these extreme ideologies and concepts, they are a loud minority. Because the vast majority of Muslims do not believe in that, do not condone that, do not advocate for that. And the last thing that I wanted to draw home, draw, draw, the point that I wanted to bring home is that Islam is not made up of one set of beliefs and behaviors that are practiced and adhered to by one group of people all the time. All right, And if we were to take that sentence and kind of chop it up, and dissect it, we would understand that every other religion has the same dilemma. Islam is not one religion, although we would like to believe that it is one religion with one, be one set of beliefs, one set of behaviors, one set of people, group of people who all adhere to those things uh, emphatically. Unfortunately, in a perfect world, yes, we don't live in a perfect world, right? So, number one, there are Muslims that come from different understandings of Islam. You have different sects of Islam, Shiitism, Sufism, you know, Sunnis, you, you name it, you name it. And Prophet Muhammad prophesied that, you know, the religion would split into these, you know, different sects, just as Christianity and Judaism split into different sects, all right? So for those of you who are not Muslim, you have other faiths, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. I was raised as a Baptist, and I converted to Islam. So I know both sides of the fence. I'm not speaking to you as a Muslim who knows absolutely nothing about Christianity. I was born and raised as a Christian. And the thing is, is that even Christians amongst themselves, you know, you have Protestants who believe that they're better than Baptists. Baptists who believe that they're better than this one. This one. And in Islam, we have the same thing. Sufis believe that the truth is with them and they are the ones that are going to paradise, right, to heaven. And they are God's chosen people, right? And Sufis believe the same thing. Shiites believe the same thing. And with each belief system, there are a set of behaviors that are attached to those beliefs. And so when someone draws a picture of Prophet Muhammad, you know, insultingly and making mockery of someone's faith, you have to believe that within that group of people that, that are called Muslims, and the different sects that are amongst them, that there are some people who are not going to take, and, and it doesn't matter, we can speak out against the terrorist, terrorist acts, we can speak out until we're blue in the face, this is not going to change anything. Where does it start, where does the change start? Because I'm a solution-oriented person, I don't like to just keep blabbing, you know, and, and we're not really getting anywhere. What is the solution to this? People come from, Muslims come from certain countries where if you were to insult Prophet Muhammad, they would murder you in the streets. I, I, was, I remember being in school in Saudi Arabia and there was an argument between two students. One said if Prophet Muhammad was alive today, he would wear the regular clothes of the people in his environment. The other one said no, he wouldn't. He would wear the standard Saudi dress, which is the white long thobe, which you see Imam Hadi wearing now, right? Said, no, he would wear this. And I mean, literally in the hallway getting ready to fight to the point where one got upset and he declared the other one to be an infidel. You're a Catholic, you're, you're a disbeliever. Because he said Prophet Muhammad would wear the regular clothes of the people in his environment. A small argument like that could escalate to the point where a Muslim would call another Muslim an infidel. So what do you think is going to happen when we release this individual out into the world and someone from another faith just happens to, you know, say whatever he feels about Prophet Muhammad? These ideologies, they exist. You cannot kill an ideology. You can, you can as many planes as you want, as many bombs as you want, you cannot kill an ideology. Ideologies don't die. 
They are inherited by another group of people. So that is our starting point, and that is to change the beliefs of the understandings of people who believe that it is okay to spill someone's blood simply because they insulted you or they spoke their mind or they said something about you that you dislike. That is where it starts. And we have issues like that right here in America. If you was to say something about my mother right now, I would get offended and, you know, God knows best where that conversation would end. But we see this all day long. I pick my children go to junior high school. There are fights up there every day. And what are those fights over? Because someone said something about this one, someone said. So uh, we have a problem. That problem exists right here in America. Right here next door, I live in the buildings right here next door. There were two people that were murdered just a couple of nights ago. Two people murdered in the parking lot. Why? Because most likely somebody said something that I didn't like. So this is, this is a universal problem. This is not an Islamic problem for we to make Muslims and Islam the bad guys, right? This is, we're always looking for a boogeyman. We're always looking for someone that you know, we're in fear of, that we're scared of, right? Because fear motivates people. There are two motivating factors right, that the media uses. Fear and love, compassion. And I mean, we want to be more compassionate as Muslims, and we want to fight against these you know, ideologies and these concepts. But I think it's important that we, you know, put everything in perspective and understand that, um, okay, I'm at 12 minutes already.